Hello and welcome to this brief introduction on how to use areas on the SPC system. In this overview, we will have a brief example of how areas are the glue of the entire SPC system, bringing together doors, user profiles, zones, outputs, keypads, and even other areas into an organization that you can organize interoperability between all the elements of the system. In this video, we're going to show how to set up an area, how to configure it, and then we're going to have a look at some advanced features within the areas. We're just going to touch on these topics, and there will be other additional videos to cover these topics in more detail. So to start, we log on to the SPC webpage, and we enter full configuration mode. You can see here there is a full set. We have a single area on the system at the moment, and we're going to add another area now. So we select configuration. The areas menu shows you an overview of all the areas that are configured on the system, and you can have up to 60 areas on a system. And any time you can edit an area, you can change the entry time for the entry exit, or the exit time for the entire system. If you're using an exit terminator for the area, you can have no entry time, or you can alter some other advanced settings. You also will see here the part set options. These are configured per area, and you have the ORF output time. So really anything that can be logically grouped into an area, you'll find the settings here. So now we will add another area. We can give this area a unique name, so we're just gonna call it garage. We get the same settings as the first area, just to make programming easier. And you can save this area now if you wish. Accessing the rest of the system, you will immediately see that another option has appeared for all the elements in the system. And we can move zones into our new area. Now these zones will behave as if they are part of garage. That will affect confirmed alarms and other operations, setting and unsetting. You will also see in outputs, new output types have been created so that you can select the state of your new area. Returning to the home page, you will now see two areas on the home screen. Selecting full set on the screen now will now Onset or full set both areas on the system. This concludes the overview of the basic features of the SPC area system. We're now going to look at some more advanced features um, that are available ATM support, auto arming support, and features of that nature. Um, even though these are specific mainly for financial or targeted financial features, they are also useful in commercial systems where you want to protect stock rooms or things of that nature. So <clears throat> what's very important here is to take the context of what these are achieved and what they allow you to do with the SPC system. So the first thing we have to do is to enable these features. And to do that, we have to enter configuration mode and select the system. And we will enter the advanced mode. This unrestricted mode in financial gives all options available to the system for areas. So when we return to areas now, we select add you'll see there's this additional step. And for this example, we can select ATM, Vault, or Advanced. Uh, ATM and Adv Vault give predefined for Advanced, and Advanced lets you edit everything. So immediately as you start scrolling down here, you will see a lot more options have appeared. And these will allow you to configure the system to operate in very selective ways. One of the options you'll see first is linked areas. Now what this does is define the area behavior between areas. Now that sounds complicated, but really what you're doing here is covering options of, well, 
I don't want the common area to set if any of the shops are on set, or I don't want to allow any shops to on set if the common area is set. And linked areas allows you to cover all these range of options. You can also say if someone sets the common area, arm all the linked areas. So there are quite a lot of options that can be covered with linked areas. In this example now, we have selected the common area to start arming when both areas are armed. So we arm the home and the garage, and now area 3's arming has started. The exit timer is running, so that if you are leaving the area, you would have time to exit. Uh, once that is complete, you will see that area 3 will update. And we can now see that area 3 has armed because area 1 and 2 was armed. Returning to configuration to our area, we will look at some other additional functionality. There is now a scheduling option that will allow the area arming, disarming and access to be controlled by a calendar. Now, this can be used to restrict access or to take complete control of the area. So the area is armed and disarmed, completely automated by the system. You will also see this reporting, early to set, late to set, early to onset and late to onset. Now, this is quite a useful feature if you want to know that a shop has not been on set, that nobody has come to work or to know that somebody came in late, uh, that it will report uh, to the system that the system was late to onset. And when using the mobile app, this will be reported to you. Below you will also see a range of auto arming control options that will allow the customers to achieve almost any option they want. They can delay auto arming, cancel it, uh, delay it using various elements of the system. The last two, sorry, last three options are all OK, or if output, and fire exit. The all OK is a confirmation that everything is in order when a system is on set. The or if output controls the or if output when the or if op activates. And the fire exit defines the exit route should a fire occur or emergency occur in the area. All of these will be covered in other videos. And this has been just a brief overview of how to access the advanced functionality within an area and how to use it. Thank you for watching and goodbye.